War in Afghanistan was never meant to be a multi-generational undertaking. We were attacked. We went to war with clear goals. We achieved those objectives. Bin Laden is dead, and al-Qaeda is degraded in Iraq, in Afghanistan. And it's time to end the forever war. I still can't believe that guy's president. But that was President Biden announcing his decision earlier today to withdraw all U.S. troops from Afghanistan by September 11th. This is 20 years after the terror attacks that began America's longest war. The president seems to have changed his mind from the plan he offered a year ago. Check it out. You do think there should be some U.S. presence that remains yes, in Afghanistan? Yes, a very small presence to be able to determine whether or not. I mean a small footprint. What does that look like? It look, looks American? like a, several thousand people mm -hmm. to make sure that we have a place from which we can operate. Not everyone's welcoming Biden's decision. There's a lot of debate about this now. Let's bring in Cash Patel, former chief of staff to the acting United States Secretary of Defense. Cash, good to see you again, man. Thank you. Hey, Buck, it's great to be with you. Thanks for having me. What is your what is your first just gut reaction to the Biden announcement today, given especially the people are already saying, is this a continuation of the Trump plan? Well, that's exactly it. President Trump made the gutsy call to end the forever wars. He ran on that campaign and he withdrew us out of Somalia, withdrew us down to almost nothing in Iraq. And Afghanistan was obviously always the biggest focus, having our largest blood and treasure expenditure. So President Biden's attempt to unify the country seemed to be only uh, false verbiage because what he could have done was said, President Trump was right to end the war in Afghanistan, and I'm going to continue the trajectory he laid out, which would have been down to zero troops come 1 May. But he chose to politicize it in his typical fashion and say, now it's his idea, and the mainstream media is going to debutize him as the king of peace because he came out of his mouth and not Donald Trump. I mean, I know from the senior uh, spot you had in the, in the Pentagon, you're, you're not new to seeing the politics and the journo narratives on the outside. But I have a feeling, Cash, we're, we're going to see a lot of folks who were saying it was reckless to even talk about withdrawal, total withdrawal from Afghanistan a year ago in the corporate media, who all of a sudden are going to say that this is the kind of thing that gets you a Nobel Peace Prize. Well, <laughs> Buck, you're exactly right. And it didn't even take them 24 hours because all the other major headlines in the mainstream media are praising uh, President Biden's decision to go to zero, and then including congressional leadership who I personally fought with over the phone when we were going to zero in Afghanistan. So these congressional leaders and political leaders and thought leaders in the mainstream media, um, you hit it right on the head. It's the height of hypocrisy. It just depends from their purpose um, who's saying it. When President Trump had the grand vision to end the war, it wasn't a good idea then. And we have uh, President Trump back in uh, May of 2020 on Facebook when the then commander in chief was allowed to even be on Facebook. Uh, we are acting as a police force, not the fighting force that we are in Afghanistan. After 19 years, it's time for them to police their own country, bring our soldiers back home, but closely watch what's going on and strike with thunder like never before, if necessary. Do you, do you think that will be sufficient cash if in fact the Biden administration, look, I, I've been saying this all day today on radio, I was for withdrawal when it was Trump. I'm still for withdrawal now that it's Biden. I'm not changing just because of the team that happens to be in charge. But what do you make of those? I mean, we got a lot of voices out there, Marco Rubio, Mitch McConnell, many of them, particularly in congressional Republican leadership right now, who are saying, oh, we're going to get hit with a 9-11 again if we leave. Well, what's your response to that? The response to that congressional thought is that then we're never going to leave any war. We're never going to leave Iraq. We're never going to leave Somalia. We're never going to leave our presence around Iran. And we're never going to leave Afghanistan. And that's not what the American people want their United States military utilized for. They don't want blood and treasure, most of all, lives killed in action serving our country overseas for somebody else's war. I mean, I have to agree with you and the work that you did in your agency in the deterioration of, ca of counterterrorism programs around the world, or terrorists around the world, I should say. And I think we've come a sufficiently long enough way over that arc of two decades to say, yeah, President Trump's priority was to kick Al Qaeda's ass. We did that. We wiped out 97% of the Shura Council. We did defeated ISIS. We eliminated Baghdadi and defeated Soleimani. I think these wins highlight how far we've come in the fight against terrorism. And for congressional leaders to just say on a whim, well, Al Qaeda is going to come back. Well, if they do, we're going to be ready for them. And that's the difference between now and 20 years ago.